Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this video, we're going to talk about the exercise hip abduction. Hip abduction is the movement where the leg is moved from the midline of the body out, away from the midline. That's what abduction means. Abduct, to, abduct is to take away, to move away from the midline. So we're gonna do hip abduction. The muscle involved in this is the gluteus medius muscle. And for anyone to wanna see it, this is the muscle right here. And if you notice from its attachment point, it's attached to the pelvis and then to the outer portion of the greater trochanter of the hip joint. So you could imagine that if this was a stable point and this is the mobile point, it's pulling up on the outer side of the greater trochanter, which would pull the head up and in, which would lead to the low, to the leg, the thigh moving away from the midline. So that's how you get hip abduction. Again, it's the gluteus medius muscle and it works by causing a pull from its stable side, which is the pelvis on the outer portion of the greater trochanter of the hip joint, pulling up which would then cause this to come up and in, which then causes the leg to move out, creating hip abduction. Now, there is so much improper information and so many people doing it wrong that nobody really gets the benefit they're looking for. And I figured that it was worth putting one video out just on the do's and don'ts of performing hip abduction correctly. So as I described, it's the gluteus medius muscle. We understand the concept of how it works. So basically in terms of the actual exercise, you could do this either standing or laying down. If you're standing, you're going to have the resistance attached to some mechanism to support the resistance. You could use a cable system in a gym or you could use a resistance band and attach it into a door or secure it to some other object. But the key is that the resistance is supported independently of your legs. You are not attaching a loop around your legs and having one leg support the loop while the other leg is moving the other side of the loop. The reason is that in trying to perform an exercise, we're trying to get the optimal amount of energy that the body can utilize to move the resistance. Therefore, we want every other aspect of the body to be fully relaxed, thereby allowing all the energy to go towards the movement of the resistance. If you are putting a loop around your leg so that one leg is supporting the loop while the other is moving the loop, the leg that is supporting the loop must exert a massive level of energy to stabilize because for every force there's an equal and opposing force. So if you're trying to pull away from the stabilizing leg, then the resistance band is going to have to try to pull back. You're going to have to stop it. Okay? So you never, ever use a resistance mechanism where one part of the body is working to stabilize the resistance while the other is moving the resistance. That defeats the whole premise behind achieving the maximal amount of effort by utilizing the maximum amount of energy to push the maximal amount of resistance to get stronger in the shortest period of time, okay? So no loops, no loops. That's the first thing. So we've got the band attached to a door and a frame or some object. We have the band around the ankle. We turn the foot in slightly. We're starting with our feet right next to one another. We then have our nose directly over the foot that we're standing on. We then begin to move the ankle out until the outer portion of the ankle meets the outer portion of the pelvis. You do not go any further. The idea of going out for some unlimited range of motion is worthless. It has no value in strengthening the gluteus medius muscle. As I've said, the muscle begins at the pelvis and attaches to the greater trochanter. You can only bring one muscle towards the other muscle for it to actually create force. Once the limb goes beyond that range of motion, you're now going to work a different muscle. So we're just bringing the foot from the midline to, the out, to where the outer portion of the ankle meets the outer portion of the hip. We put the foot down. Now we move our nose from over the foot we're standing on to the foot that we're now weight-bearing on that we moved. 
then we bring the foot back. So it's two distinct steps. We uh, have our weight over the foot we're standing on with our nose over that foot. We move the foot out separately until the outer portion of the ankle meets the outer portion of the hip. We put that foot down. Then we shift our nose so that it's over the foot we just moved. Then we bring it back. It's a continuous flow. You don't stay there forever. You're just putting the foot down and then moving it back. For everyone who thinks the answer is to move it all the way beyond that, as far out as you can, just put your hand on your pelvis and you'll notice that as soon as the foot begins to get outside the outer portion of the pelvis, your hip, your pelvis is going to rise. Your pelvis is going to rise. Your pelvis is going to rise. The reason is because you're no longer creating motion at the hip joint. You're now just having the pelvis rise, which is being accomplished by the quadratus lumborum or QL, lower back muscle, pulling from its attachment to the rib cage on its attachment to the pelvis. So you're just raising your pelvis. All that extra range of motion that's occurring outside the line of the pelvis is just activating your QL. You're not doing anything to strengthen the gluteus medius muscle. So for everybody who's just thinking that there's some sort of windmill and they should just go out as far as they can go out, it's defeatist. You're not isolating the gluteus medius. That's why no one's getting any stronger. That's why no one's seeing any benefit from this stuff. Because you're just wasting your time doing everything other than causing the maximum amount of resistance to be pushed by the maximum amount of muscle. All right? So the do, we attach the band to some object to make sure it's secured, not by the other leg, but by some other object, typically in a door in a frame. We, don't, we start with our foot turned in slightly. We're going to move the leg out. We're going to have our nose over the foot we're standing on. We're going to move our leg out just until the outer portion of the ankle meets the outer portion of the hip. We're going to put our foot down. We're going to shift our weight over the foot we just moved and are standing on. Then we're going to shift it right back to start again. The don'ts. We do not use a loop. We do not secure the resistance on the opposite leg because it's completely inefficient and defeats the purpose of maximal energy for maximal resistance to strengthen the muscle in the shortest period of time. We do not go outside the realm of where the ankle meets the outer portion of the pelvis. It stops there. That's where the range of motion ends. The idea of doing continuous motions, like you're running down, walking sideways forever and ever along the length of a gym, is complete. You're basically doing one and then the other, one and then the other, one and then the other. You're basically moving your feet well outside. If you ever stayed just inside the line of the pelvic rim, you would be taking two, three inch steps. It's going to take you an eternity to do it. Everybody who's doing that sidestepping for the eternity down the gym is going way outside the line of the pelvis with their foot. And they're basically just working their QL, 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 QL. It's just foolhardy nonsense. We try to isolate one muscle. It moves one joint in one direction. We do that for three sets of 10 repetitions with a minute rest in between each set. You're only going to be doing this three times a week with a day in between so that the micro tears that are developing through the process of strengthening have the chance to heal, which occurs in an inflammatory response over the next 24 to 48 hours after the bout of exercise. The resistance you should be an exertion level of eight, which is to say that if you did 10 and I said, could you do an 11th or 12th? You would say, well, probably, but it's a little hard. I might have difficulty finishing it. That's the right exertion level. You stay with that exertion level with that exact level of resistance until the resistance gets easier, at which time the muscle has adapted. You've actually made more muscle mass, thereby making it easier. And you're going to go down to an exertion level of five, which is to say, could you do 15 or 16 reps? You'd say, well, probably. That's the time where you're going to increase the resistance. You do so by moving farther away from the attachment point or going to a thicker band or shrinking the size of the loop. One of those. All right. This is what you need to know, know about hip abduction. The gluteus medius is responsible for basically function in life. And it's because we have two legs. And every time we take one leg off the floor, the pelvis is now only stabilized on one side. Therefore, it should fall. The only thing that stops it from happening is the gluteus medius right here reversing. And this is the stable side and this is the mobile side. So it's pulling on its pelvic attachment, pulling down on its attachment from the greater trochanter, which then creates an upward force, keeping the pelvis level while that foot's on the floor. 
That's what gives you balance and stability. For anyone wondering why you have a balance issue, it's a weak loop mead. It's not something psychological. It's not some sort of um, uh, sensory aspect for almost anyone I've ever dealt with. It's because their glute meets a weak. You don't have a balance issue. You actually have a weakness issue. I think this is a good discussion, a good overview of what hip abduction is, what muscle it works, how to perform the exercise correctly, how to do it over a series of time to strengthen the muscle. And what is its purpose? Why do we need a glute meet? Why is hip abduction such an important exercise to be performed? All right. Hopefully this really defines why you're probably not getting your benefit. And even if you're just doing this for general conditioning, you might as well do it correctly if you're going to invest the time in doing it instead of doing these eternal walking down the gym, not getting any benefit from it, just for the sake of doing it. You might, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it correct to get the result that you probably are looking for that maybe others out there do not have an understanding of how to achieve. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. If you like this video and it makes sense to you, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe to get notifications when new videos are added or when I am live on YouTube. If this is making sense, maybe you have a question, by all means, you can contact me at Dr. Mitch at MitchellYas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com. If you're having some issues and you'd like me to assist you in resolving your symptoms, uh, by all means, we can set up a Zoom or Skype session. Again, you could do so by contacting me by email at Dr. Mitch at MitchellYas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S dot com. All right, for now, let's all get strong. Let's all get fit. Let's resolve our symptoms. Let's be fully functional. Let's regain the lives we so justly deserve. Hopelessness, depression, and suicide do not have to be your endpoint. You can forget the medical system and recognize there's something outside the medical system that is actually proven theoretically and clinically to work to diagnose and treat your pain. That is the YAS method. All right, for now, Dr. Mitchell YAS, wish you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.